think we're we're live. We're live on Facebook. I'm Matt. I'm Brian, and we're just doing one of our videos. Yep. To uh, to to your relatives, my relatives. Uh huh. Yeah. And and some church people. A couple who might be available today yeah. this time. And then I think there's a couple friends of yours that every once in a while chime in. Um, no, that was on my Facebook live. Oh, now that it's on the church. Yeah, my phone's buzzing. Oh, it's my brother. He can wait. You can call him back. You can, actually, you should talk to him while we're on. Hey, Mitch, I'm a Facebook live, but you don't do Facebook really, so he's not watching. Gotcha. Yeah. So I, we, we really, we, what was our topic? Well, you wanted to bring up this lady that's gone viral. Oh, crazy. The I, the I ain't doing it lady. I ain't doing it. Yeah. Wide lips, right? And I'm not trying to make fun of this lady. She well, has she's wide done lips. it to herself. Yeah. Well, she's done it to herself. Yeah. With the filters, right? Are you aware of this? I am aware. Okay. You know that's not a real face. Well, at first I thought maybe she had some kind of struggle because her eyes are quite large too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe there's something going on. But I did finally figure out that it was filters. Okay, good. It's not. It wasn't too much makeup have solvented her face. Well, I was thinking Tammy Faye, but I didn't uh, want to say anything. No. You know, well, anyway, the point being, I. I'm driving here today going, nobody's watching us. No. We don't have, we're not gimmicky. Oh. We would need a gimmick. So we would need to make our lips wide. Right. Eyes large. We well, can't really copy, because if you think about her gimmick, it's pretty much, uh, who, who was that Bill Langvall everybody was into? Here's your sign. I don't remember. The three guys. It was Jeff, Jeff Foxworthy, Bill Langvall, and, uh, and the big fella. Tom Mater. Uh, oh, he does the uh, gastrointestinal commercials now. Prilosec. Prilosec, yeah. yeah. See, I don't remember his name. This is how this, is how this works. <laughs> but the, the I ain't doing it lady is just a rehash of that. I mean, yeah. she has a southern accent. Right. She uses funny words like dead gum. Uh -huh. and, uh, and, and her catch line, instead of here's your sign, or I can't even remember what was his, the big guy, what's his name? How are we not getting this? I, I don't know. Everybody loved him. Will somebody respond? No, because you'd have to be watching. Yeah. Anyway, watch. <clears throat> um, we need a gimmick. Okay. So let's talk about let's, what, what the gimmick could be. Right. And then maybe we'll bring it on to a deeper level of what the gimmicks are that the church uses. Okay. I like this. Is that, is that where it's going? This finally has a point. Okay. All right. All right. So if we were to use a gimmick, what, what do you think? Maybe we could even ask our audience of what? Nobody. No, I know. There's nobody watching, right? No. Your family doesn't like to watch you, which this should give you a hint for Sunday. Oh, Stacy Shackelford Roth looks like joined. What's that mean? Oh, she's watching. She is right now. What's up, Stacy? Does she have to do something to let us know that she's watching? Well, she could respond. Do you want to type something? No, oh, I don't. I don't want to type anything. No, no, she she can type. Oh, it. you're talking to her. She now. could go. Yeah, Stacy, go like, hey, man, Brian, or you don't even have to like me. Just go, hey, Brian, and yeah. and the other guy. Or can you hit one of those heart things? <gasps> oh, yeah, that would be that's instant gratification. Hit a heart thing. Yeah. All right, we she's need gone. She's gone already. I just have this feeling. All right. Well, we need to get this thing moving so that she doesn't leave if she's staying. Okay, let's move along. Because her time's valuable. Right. This is only one person now. Right. So we need to make sure we're catering. Okay. So person. let's do it. All right. So if we were going to use a gimmick, what gimmick could we use to make sure that more people watch us? Any, you got any ideas? Could we be offensive? Ooh. But we are coming from a Jesus type of background, so would that be appropriate? But isn't the isn't the gospel offensive? Oh, in that sense. Ah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. But are we are we being offensive enough? So you're saying from a, okay. I'm working from a, I'm working from a Steve Anderson angle. Okay, so just tell people. We'll literally. just be shouty and we'll hit stuff. Oh, we got two other people. We got uh, Janelle Thompson and Judah's in. What's up, Judah? <laughs> All right, so if we're going to use a gimmick or we're going to do something so more people will watch us, we need their help too to figure out. So should we be more offensive then? I, how could we be offensive? So what you say, what you're saying is we should tell it like it is. Well, yeah. All right. So we would say things like, if you don't X, Y, Z, you're going to hell. Who doesn't turn into that? That's good stuff. Yeah. Right there. And, and you know, only, it puts us on a spot for failure, which is wonderful. Yeah. 
you know, and we can get some comments at least, because at least people, usually when people are upset, they'll comment. Ah, Even more so. Right. Right. Yeah. So, that so like, what, what could we say? Offensive. Um, I, I could think, here's the problem. I could think of about seven things that, is the problem. that I don't want. And, but I, am I worried that I'm politically incorrect? Yeah. Versus offensive? I don't think so, but you do have, you will have to process whether the statement you're going to make is offensive for the right reasons. And, you know, it's, it's going to be a positive as opposed to just, you know, beating somebody up. Right. Right. So like, could I say like, should we have Sunday sermons that are like Jehovah witness is a cult. And this, and this is why, this is why Jehovah witness are a cult or Mormons. Mormons, I'm sorry, but you're beating down a dusty trail of destitution, loneliness, and hell. And yet their promotion is family wholeness. Right. They're all about the family. Right. Which seems really positive and good in the Mormon Right, church. right. But yet at the same time, they believe in aliens and somehow becoming a god themselves. I right? kind of believe in aliens, too, just that they're demons. <laughs> all right, we'll get on that subject. That'll be all, that's a whole different talk. Yeah. Okay, so we we could be offensive, but but people who like offensive would be the people that watch. We we want to try and broaden our audience, so we we need to if we're gonna do offensive, we need some. Can we do funny offensive? Funny offensive. Okay, how how I wonder how we would do funny? Offensive. Is there any input out there about funny offensive? I I don't even know how that is. Then the whole reason for the rest of you that just joined, we're talking about the ain't doing it lady, which she's hilarious, and apparently she's come out. Yeah out of nowhere and just boom exploded on the scene because it is cute and right. funny right and if you're if you're gonna look up the ain't doing it lady don't don't go off of our no don't do it now don't do it now oh they're all gone we're, we're down to one seriously yeah and that's how that works yeah this see the one up there yeah 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 man no wonder we don't get anybody watches we don't even know what we're doing so these people on the right they joined but we don't know oh if Judah strong. is that his comment you should for sure offend people. That's Judah. Oh. And then he also said this video is all pixelated and blurry. We'll get a better internet connection, Judah. There, that's offensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Judah. Obviously, this is Judah's problem. Yeah, this is his Judah's. End. Yeah, because the we network. Have, we have spectrum high speed. Right. 100 megabytes. Right. It's like a giant pipe in here of internet. Yeah. Yeah. Psh, You're probably, right. where are you at? A coffee shop or somewhere? Yeah. It's you like down or. 40 other people using the same internet? Are you down at MF? Maybe they are not good at <laughs> That's offensive. Uh, that is offensive. <laughs> saying MF doesn't have a good network. Is that what you're saying? No, I didn't say that at all. I just oh. said maybe Judy should get a better internet connection if he happens to be at MF. Hey. Well, let's put two and two together. Hey, Judy, you said that offensive is good. We're going to go with it now. Right, and you're the one at the butt of the joke. So <laughs> Yeah, and so now we're, now we're getting Now funny. we're alienating the guy who commented. This is not, we don't know how to do this. I'm telling you right now, we don't know how to do this. So, okay, so we do need an angle, right, so that more people watch. Right. But let me ask this question then. When it comes to church, the church seems to always try to find angles so more people will be involved. And Accepted. People, accepted, all right. Yeah. So let's go down this angle. What, what do you see are some of the interesting um, marketing tools or what is what is the thing you, you said that we need to do like to be offensive what was the term you just used here I'm you talking about the lady that uh, ain't doing it lady right you said we needed a um, uh, it was, uh, well it'd be like a gimmick or a, a gimmick yeah. that's it okay so let's go with the gimmick Rob what what kind of gimmicks are the church is using to try and draw people in and is it appropriate to call it a gimmick because obviously some people will be offended by that. Well, say, at, no. best, at best, you call marketing. Okay, so what at kind best of marketing? marketing? But it really is gimmick. Right, to get people into the church and interested. And is that working, number one? I don't think so. And number two, is it um, is it actually getting people to where they need to be? So what are some of the marketing tools or gimmicks you see the church using? Well, everything, uh, right down to worship. I'll go I'll go right to my department for everything. Worship. Everything's a gimmick. Everything is a gimmick. Anything outside of we come to listen to the word on Sundays and gather to be with one another on fellowship and then leave is a gimmick. Kids program, boom, gimmick. Youth group, boom, gimmick. 
watching your other than outside toddlers gimmick uh church picnics definitely a gimmick uh, right it, yeah isn't it like i do have a new ds that just just took over the, the you want to watch it central ohio you want to watch it this no. is me saying it, not brian no he go for it i'm just i'm him. just saying i'm wondering how long if they see this before video. you get a phone call yeah okay that's good but but I, I I stand behind my statement. That's fine. Let's just yeah, why are we having a church picnic? You're asking me this question? Yeah. Well some people said that they we thought they, they thought that we should have a church picnic. But why? So they can get together with other people, get to know people, build relationships. Within the church. Yeah. That's a positive thing. That 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 is a positive thing. But now what if we turn it into what if we seem to think that this is this is going to be an outreach? Okay. Like, at what point do we shift from? Well, I guess there's three categories. So you got in house, we're fellowshipping, uh -huh. and then you've got all the way on the other side, actual ministry. You know, outpouring of the spirit into the community. Where is that middle gray area where we're trying to manufacture with our uh, inner hospitality, God moving. Somewhere in the middle, we or or at some point here, we come to this place where we're trying to manufacture mm -hmm. outpouring. Yeah, that's the gimmick. That's the church gimmick. Okay, I would agree with that. Cook out in the parking lot. Invite your friends. It's yeah. a gimmick. You you realize that what you're saying here, you are speaking to ninety nine point nine percent, maybe a hundred percent of all churches in North America. I, I know, and I think that's why we are where we are. I think that is why the church is ineffective, and I understand that uh, where I'm at right now is there's a lot of people going boo. <laughs> I, I don't doubt it for a second. I'm yeah. probably a, a naysayer and a poo pooer. Okay, so could I? So so could I play devil's advocate? Go ahead and say that people's argument would be this is not a gimmick. It might be a marketing tool, but it's a marketing tool for the gospel. And what we're trying to do is try to find avenues to connect with people so that we can share the gospel. However, what you're saying is that we're doing this and we say that this is a tool, but it just becomes a part of the beast. Yeah. And it just, it, it just, it's I want to, I, I don't you think that the para ministry is the culmination of this attitude explain so all, ministry, th all through the all through the 90s and what well the 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 idea that i have a ministry for the ministry that's the para ministry right mm -hmm. i have a ministry to help ministry i mean let's just think about how stupid it is to say that by itself we're identif we're 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 a ministry to help the ministry minister. Oh, you're in trouble. You want to see who's here? I just. So these are people who've commented, or they've come and gone. So oh. you know, that we have nobody now. They're all out. Oh my goodness. Yeah, they're all out. We so we're talking to ourselves right now. We are. But this will be replayed. Oh, okay. Okay. So let's go back. Let's. Go. So to, is not the church gimmicky program. Amplified out into we just talk to ourselves. Yeah, and, and as long as I guess as long as the church is understanding that we are just talking to ourselves and that's what we're doing, we're building relationships and encouraging one another, that's fine. But I think we have some kind of uh, perception that feels like that's outreach. Yeah, and right, it's not exactly. No, it's right. not, it's pathetic, right? Because we're not. Where is the actual pouring out? Where because if if we as the church, as many people claim to be Christians and filled with the Spirit, then wouldn't you think that you you would see this in our communities instead of shootings and divorce in our church and anger on Facebook and where 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 talk on Facebook? Where right? well, just 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 the arguing like. Like, do you know we've come to a point where we can't, we can't go, I disagree with you, but I still love you. Right. It is, I disagree with you, and now I hate you. Yeah, and now I'm unfriending you. And now I'm unfriending you. Yeah. That, that's really the, the meat and potatoes of the right. thing. We can't, but we're not, 
I'm, I'm headed off into the weeds. Here. I was going to say you've gone off into tolerance, which tolerance today means that if if you agree with me, I can tolerate you. Right. If you don't agree with me, then I can't tolerate you. But I. But yet we've we do all of this stuff to feel good. We're doing all this so we feel good. Yeah. We're you know and and I have my opinion. I I need to have my opinion, and my opinion needs to be right so I feel good. I'm doing all these things at church. We're having all of these groups, so I feel good. Or so that when you come here, you feel good. You you get something out of what I'm doing. You feel, so So if we're having a lot of events at the church, then you feel like this church is actually doing something. Uh, and, and that makes. That makes you feel good. That makes you but feel good. That you, we, we're like, look at us as a church. What we, we have small groups. We have a youth group. We have a worship team. We, we do all of these things for the community. Look how good we are. And yet nothing shows the goodness of the church. Yeah. So it's not enough. That we people, can't keep the doors open on Sunday nights and Wednesdays. Right. Because it's not enough that people would just come and pray on Wednesday night. Right. Yeah. But this is, I guess, this is what I'm saying. It's, it's like got, It's got to be exciting. Yeah. It's got to be, yeah, it's, I'm with you. It's got to be hot dogs and clowns and ponies, or or it has to be this new social wave of, like, I am helping people. Look, I got a rake out one Saturday and got it all done. Like, it's it's still, shouldn't we do that every Saturday? We should. And I was just going to make a comment that part of my issue is that, like, I just heard a report recently. Where did I hear it? It doesn't matter. But I heard a report. That now the average attendance. This is a, this is an uh, this is an average or what they call a regular attender in the church is 1.8 Sundays a month. I don't know how you it's go. It's not even two Sundays a month. Not even two Sundays a month. Right. right. So the idea or the concept was is that people obviously are are going to church, and so then the, the question was why aren't you going to church? And so some of these people's feedback were the church has hurt me, and some people's feedback was, well, the church, there's too many hypocrites. One person said, uh, the reason why I don't go to church is because no one's ever invited me. See, I, I take issue with that because the church really is not supposed to be a place where we invite sinners to. Well, and it's ironic, just to really quickly go back to my point, we have more programs, events, things to do, stuff to talk about books and libraries and TVs and movie nights. Right. We have more things than ever before that we've thrown out there against the wall, right. gimmicks. Right. And yet people feel uninvited. How ironic is that? Right. And I know I and other people, we invite people that are outside the church to come to these events all the time. So one of two things are happening. And some people may just say I haven't been invited because that's just a cop out, just smoke screen. But my, my thought is this, that the church is about believers. Like what we do here. Yes, part of it is about outreach, and we want non-believers to come and hear the gospel. But part of it is we're supposed. To, this is supposed to be a training ground, a, a training ground for believers to to be equipped and learn how to then go and take the gospel and be the gospel right. to people outside. Why am I inviting people to an event instead of inviting them into a relationship with Jesus? That's the issue right. I take with this. I think the mentality is all wrong. Right. We, we think that Sunday morning in a church setting inside of a building is where is is where people find Jesus. Right. And let's face it, if the church on Sunday morning... If you're going to a church, you should already know Jesus. That's why you're there. I would think so. And that then, makes sense. And then when you're there, you're... Uh, you're learning, you're growing, you're worshiping him together, you're being encouraged together, which is why the Bible tells us the church should come together to encourage one another to do good works. And what are good works? To go out and share the gospel. So then those people leave that facility and the world should be plastered with church. Right. Church should be everywhere. Chairs sound like a party. <laughs> That's great. I love these chairs. That's good. That's yeah. good. So I think that the gimmick should be for the church is to tell people when you come here, Get ready to be trained. Right. Get ready to learn. Get ready to grow. Get ready to be broken. Right. But no, everybody wants to be excited and encouraged. Why and have we not moved that attitude into our gimmicky events? Yeah. And and I think that's where the fruitlessness is coming in. I do we really think that having a church picnic or uh, you know 
whatever. I, I don't care what it is at this time. I, I use the church picnic as generic, okay? It's very generic because I don't want to be offensive. But we should. We're supposed to be offensive. Is that what we decided? Judah, Judah told us we could be offensive. We could be offensive? Yeah. All right. So we have these, all of these organizations with all these ideas about what the church should be doing and, and these things that we should be doing, and we're pouring money into it and people's time and efforts and whatever. And, and it, it appears to be fruitless. And here's why I think that it is fruitless. is just what you're saying. We, we, we've lost the goal. Keep talking. I'm listening. We've lost the goal. We've lost the, the idea of what we should be doing. And we should be, we should be winning souls to Christ, but then we should be discipling, which is really where I think the, the thing is missing. So I've, there's, there's 14 people came this Sunday. Well, what does that mean? Right. You know, is that really, is that, is that what all of this stuff has been established for is to just get people up front and go, I give my life to the Lord and then walk away. Yeah. I think that's where we're dropping the ball. And I think that's what it's become. Well, that's how we gauge our success. That's how we gauge our success. Okay. Yeah. Help me, mm -hmm. help me flesh this thing out yeah. because that isn't the end. Right. That isn't the end. We need the people. And this is why the church is dying. We need people to stay here. We need them to want to come on Sunday, Sunday night, and Wednesday night for prayer. And work learn out. and grow and work out their own salvation. With fear and trembling. With fear and trembling. They need to be afraid. I like this. Yes. Yeah, you should come here and be afraid. That's offensive. That is now, offensive. Now, Judas says this. Judas says, um, so the question is, how do you create a culture where it isn't okay to remain stagnant in your faith? That's a good question. And someone said, hi, the picture's fine here. So, Judah, actually, your, your connection must be bad. Right, Judah, you stink. Because everybody else just says it's fine. Right. But that's a good question. It is good. It's a great how, question. How do you create a culture where it isn't okay to remain stagnant in your faith? Why, why, why are we creating it? Each individual, if they were being discipled, if they truly were committed to the works of the Lord, you would not remain stagnant on your own. And, okay, so that question right there frames what I think the problem is okay. or what we're discussing. All right. Why are we trying to create it? Well, your life, your life should make people go, I don't want to be stagnant. Look at what, look what Brian's doing. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah, but nothing happens in a vacuum, right? So, so you have to, if, if Jesus says in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth, so go and make disciples. That's the main verb, make right. disciples. Right. So if you're going to make disciples, that doesn't happen in a vacuum. So you would have to create an environment where you would have to at least be intentional. But he's in, about, yeah, but he's, he's speaking to a person. He's speaking to you. He's speaking to me. Right. Right. Okay. Well, I unto myself, I may not be good at creating an environment for anything but what i am good at is just talking okay and sharing what i know in the gospel okay and i don't need rooms paint carpet uh activities okay groups well in the winter time you would need a room at least out of the elements. yeah well i'll use my house or maybe maybe i'm making a disciple right in giant eagle i'm i'm with you i'm a hundred percent right you. But the question, I think the question is, is uh, has merit in the fact that if we are a group of people that said our goal and our mission is to make disciples, then how can we, how can we work through that together and do a better job of making disciples? So does that mean then that we do, how do we, if we're going to create an atmosphere, then maybe the fellowship on Sundays is a time where we're together talking about and encouraging one another and those kind of things. And, and that's part of creating an atmosphere to make disciples. Yes. No. Yeah. But I guess, but not everybody has that same purpose and plan when they're part of it. Right. Right. Which really, which really doesn't matter. I, I would, I wouldn't suppose. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess. All right. So, what is extremely annoying to me is we are, we are sitting down in meetings mm -hmm. trying to figure out what we can do to spread the message, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So instead of 
How come some of the things Patrick Robson's got a big thing? All right, there? all right, all right. Is he in there? He's in there. It, it's pretty big. Don't use many words, Patrick. Can I read it? I'm gonna read it out loud. Is that all right? Yeah. No. <clears throat> he he kind of put it out there. Yeah. In order to in order to create that culture, you must speak the truth. And if the gospel is offensive to my flesh or someone else's, it's doing its job. But many won't be brutally honest and speak the whole truth. I would agree with that. And Brandon says, the early church made it a point to meet daily. It's a choice not to attend a small group or come to Sunday school. Jesus isn't a priority. It, it's a choice not to attend a small group or come to Sunday school. Jesus isn't a priority. Jesus, yeah. So you're kind of throwing everybody in the ditch then? <laughs> you're kind of like, hey, if you ain't rolling out to my, my church or my small group or these events that we planned, then Jesus isn't a priority. Well, I think every disciple, though, should. I think what this question or this uh, comment from Brandon is, every disciple should have Jesus as a priority. It might not be this church is small group, right? or it might not be Sunday service, but you need to be, Jesus needs to be your priority. Right. Right? I think that's what Brandon's saying. Brandon, you want feedback? He's working, right? Is he? Aren't you supposed no, to be teaching math, What are you math, doing at Facebook? Seriously? Maybe he's on break smoking. Are you on lunch break? Oh, it is 12.18. You're probably on lunch break. You're on lunch break. That's cool. What did you say? <laughs> you said, yeah. Don't take things so literal, Matt. <laughs> hey, we're supposed to be offensive because Judas said we're going to be offensive. Right, so. we are being offensive. Do we want to? What What did you think of Patrick's comments? Oh, you're asking Brandon that? No, you. Well, I think he's. I I, I think he's on the money as far as it, the offensiveness of the gospel. You know, telling people, hey, this is the way you know God tells you to live. Yeah. That that creates a culture. Um, I but but okay, so that oh, but that creates a culture in and of itself by us doing what we're supposed to be doing, reading the word mm -hmm. and spreading it, yeah. not planning meetings right. and things for the church to do. Okay. You know, I, I do, do you see what I'm trying to say here? Yeah. So, so how, and how come, how come it is when, when we're having a meeting about what we're going to do and you'll propose that like, all right, I want, I want to focus on discipleship. How come it seems like the Tommy Boy clip where it goes, Bwah. it does. I know. I, I hear. What I you're don't saying. understand that. But if you're like, I want to have a party with carnival rides and ponies and everybody's on board. Oh, I, I know where to get the balloons. I know where to do this and the other thing. But when you go, I really want to focus on discipleship. Our church needs to make disciples. That's what we're called to do. All the air goes out. Yeah. Crickets. Crickets. Well, I don't have an answer for that. I've been banging my head against the wall for 12, 13 years yeah. thinking through that and why when I have meetings with people who are in leadership, right. you know, and you start to talk about this stuff and sometimes people get frazzled or bored about it because it's like... They don't like to hear, let Christ work through you, me, Tom, Bob, Lucy... Sally. Who's Sally? Do you I have a Sally? No, they're all fake names. Oh, yeah, gotcha. you got it. Yeah. Christ has to work through all the independent individuals mm -hmm. to make the whole. And and it is to me there is nothing the church can do if they aren't making sure that those people let the love of Christ work through them. Okay. Because our hands can do nothing. Yeah. So that only stands to be true for the church itself. Right. And so the modern day church has a real problem with just letting God do the work. Why can't I just be me and you be you and let God work through us to... to energize and make the culture that we're talking about okay and why doesn't judah why when you come to church make yourself open so that don't don't be thinking about what you can do get yourself out of it pull yourself mm -hmm. out of it and allow christ to work in you don't go what can i do this sunday to 
lead someone to Christ. Okay. Is it okay? Yeah. Because I can't. I like where you're going with that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and I think this is the problem. People don't like to hear the Lord will do it. You just do your part and make sure you're letting him come through you. Right. The rest will take care of itself. Right. I mean, I, I guess that's how I feel like my personal life goes. I'm a dirtbag. I really, I am not a good person whatsoever. I would agree with that. I am a horrible, horrible person. I agree. 100%. Okay. And so if there's anything that good that comes out of me, if there's any good attribute that anybody has to say about me, yeah. it's not me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I feel like the church needs to get a hold of this attitude. Like if the, if the people of the church think that they're planning it, it's a bunch of dirtbags making plans. Yeah. So, so we don't, so we don't want to throw every, we don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Yeah, no, I, right? I understand that we're going to do, churches are going to do what churches are going to do. Right. I'm trying to shed light on a, a topic. So what, so would it be safe to say then that the gimmicks or the marketing tools that the church uses uh, can be tools to create atmospheres for making disciples or for outreach, but it's going to come down to every individual person and how they are, um, affecting or perceiving that event. Right. 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 So if I'm going to walk in thinking I'm going to make this event happen, I'm going to do this for God. I've got, which my, I will argue is what's going on. Right. Okay. okay. Go ahead. So I've al I'm already now creating everything and doing everything for God. And then we're wondering why uh, poor attendance, why they fail, why there aren't people coming to Christ, why people's lives aren't being changed. And that probably happens even on Sunday mornings. We, Absolutely. So we when you go back to your statistic about 1.8, uh, people come 1.8 Sundays a month. Right. We are, we're not even bringing them in on Sunday mornings. Right. So you're proving your point right there. Right. So there's nothing. So so the events these are these are all uh, amoral type things. They're neither bad nor uh, nor good. Right. But they're they're events or they're opportunities creating cultures or creating atmospheres. For people to do that, but it's going to come down to the individual motivation of each person involved. So it's almost like the tares and the wheat. Uh, the disciples said to Jesus, hey, are we supposed to take these uh, tares out from among, among the wheat? And Jesus said, no, just leave them there. And in the end, I'll uproot them and, and take them out to be burned. So we've got these events. There's going to be good and bad in them. Right. But we as followers of Jesus have to get our heads on straight right. and realize that the purpose of these things is not to create or do anything. It's it's to become. It's to let Christ have His way in my life, and then do what He does so well in other people's lives around me. Well, and all right. So right, absolutely, I agree, hundred percent. But let, let's carry it one step further. We have allowed these events mm -hmm. to um, be our scapegoat to not living that way every day. Okay. So you see what I'm saying. So now all of a sudden we're charged to do outreach at an event, but we're not doing outreach when we go to Giant Eagle to pick up a gallon. Of milk. Yeah, right. I'm I'm ducking behind the potato chips because I got somewhere to be and I don't want to talk to Ken. I do that all the time. I, you do it all the time. It, you think Ken's watching? He might be. Ken, are you watching? Do we have any new comments? We do, but there's called signs of the, that's called signs of the times. You will need to first focus on. Better Wiffy? What do you mean, better Wiffy, Mitch? I think it's your end because we, we don't seem to have a problem. I got 100 megabytes pumping yeah, through these right. lines right now. 100 megabytes pumping he's, through the he's lines. He's being a negative now. The negative Nancy. Negative Nancy. That's, negative yeah. Nancy. All right. Well, you can believe that it's our Wi-Fi, but you being out there in California, Cali, I'm pretty California. sure that it's probably... Did you, did you guys pay enough for your California taxes to keep your Wi-Fi on? That's true. Uh, your Wi-Fi may not even be working right yeah. now. Yeah. Governor so, Moonbeam's getting ready to shut it off. Subpar. Subpar. Who, uh, Patrick's back in. That's called Signs of the Times. Yeah, and we're doing an end time study right now, too. We are. Which has been awesome. But this video is rambling. We're at 34 minutes. Yeah, we better cut it off. We should cut it off. All right, listen, keep thinking about this stuff because we got, at Northeast Community, we do not want to be a church that markets or gimmicks just to get people in. We want to see people who don't know Jesus come to know Jesus, give their whole life, but then become slaves of his. I mean, to die to themselves and become disciples who make other disciples or slaves who convince other people that it's really cool to be a slave. Right. Sure, absolutely, and to 
really get a hold of the idea and the concept that we we don't do anything. When I think that is truly that that that's the salvation message is we don't have to be ourselves because ourselves are not good. Mm. What what Christ died for us, he covers our sins and then if we allow him in, that's the first part, that's the numbers that we count. Yeah. But let's go past the number counting. Let's get people letting God come through them and work their hands. Okay. Yeah. And so when I hear things, I can can I be like offensive here for a second? Please do. Okay. Covering sins is Old Testament. Right. And I know you know that. Right. Jesus takes away I don't our, talk. I don't talk right all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus takes away our sins in New Testament. Right. Why do those things bug me? This pet peeves. No, you're me. you're 100 percent correct. It's because uh, I'm ignorant. <laughs> I am an ignorant. Yeah, no, listen, I am a foul person. <laughs> I'm just joking. Okay, but I'm going to read one I'm, more. I'm a, I'm a comedic entertainment. Go ahead. I, I'm going to read one more um, comment, two more comments. Jimmy Davis, I love your discussion, guys. I'm currently struggling with, um, right, with the wild age segregated model we have as a church. What I mean is that as the responsibility of discipline, uh, people, I think that instead of calling out parents to do their job when it comes to, and I it had to see more. I think I see where he's going here, though. That's a good point. This, good comment. Is, is that borderline? Um, who's that? Uh, Jimmy Davis. He came and spoke here. Yeah. He's no, I know, who, I know who he is. I, I, I'm wondering if his point was uh, along the lines of a Vody Bachman. Oh, you know, maybe. And and I that I'm kind of I think that's kind of where I'm coming from. I, I mean I, I channeling that that vein. Yeah. Yeah, discipling people. Well, yeah, we appreciate your comments. Um, we'll try to do these videos on Fridays as much as we can, and hopefully we'll get a better following. Uh, we're apparently going to have to work on our internet. It's our problem. Yeah. We'll see if we can't get 150 megabytes mm -hmm. running through these yeah. lines. Right. Yep. All right. Have a good one. Take it easy.